Hi everybody, I'm Gina Davis, and I'm here with someone incredibly special to me and to all of you, I'm sure, Nina Tassler, who I've known almost 50 years, yeah. unbelievably. And we are here to celebrate Nina getting the Susie Foraderi Spirit of Humanity Award. So let's talk to Nina. <laughs> Maybe tell us a little bit about how you got involved with JFS. I was drawn to the organization because it is a, a large social safety net organization mm -hmm. that helps people who are going through all sorts of challenges in life. Everybody who works there, they lead with their heart mm -hmm. and they lead with their commitment to helping make people's lives better. And that's you too, you know, you've always, always led with your heart. Well, and that's just inherent in who you are. Well, thank you, my love. And I just think it speaks to people who are drawn to the organization are people who truly care about humanity and care about improving the quality of people's lives. Yeah, uh, and, I, and I've been a fan ever since you became involved with JFS. I've become such a fan of Well, you, it, it's interesting because when I started getting involved in the organization, you did as well. And there was an event that we had on the lot at CBS. Right. Uh, it was called A Night of Hope. And it was to raise awareness for the domestic violence program that they have at JFS. And you, so generously co-hosted that event, which really brought out um, a, a huge, huge support at CBS. And then you did another event later on where we did a fundraiser for JFS with Peggy Ornstein, who had just published a new book and you were there speaking out. So you've been involved in, in JFS for as long as I have. It, it's wonderful for you to point out how important uh, JFS is and all the incredible things they do. And she also managed to turn this we're around to be about me, <laughs> as it turns out. Well, uh, we're going to have a series of videos, Nina, oh my and, God. Uh, I, which I don't believe you've seen. No. But uh, we're going to take a look at the first one. Oh, God, Nina is amazing. I think the best way to think about Nina is she's a person who sees everyone in the room. She's one of my favorite people. An incredible human being and someone that you want to hang out with all the time. Probably one of the biggest hearts and one of the fastest minds and one of the strongest wills of anybody I've ever met. I have always uh, been seduced by her eyewear. It has been bold and uh, audacious, just like her. Nina's like a whirling dervish of activity and thoughts and emotion. But with gravitas and focus and dignity. She might appear to be petite. Five foot nothing, if that. Which makes me feel like a giant of a man until you start to get the force of that personality. Throughout her life, Nina has never stood down and has always sought to empower those around her. Nina is as real as real can get. She's been a real role model in the social justice world. When someone throws a gauntlet down before her, she gets this little grin on her face. And then you know, uh-oh, Nina, Nina just thought, I can do this. She is one of the strongest, most powerful, passionate um, women I know. And once you are in her world, um, you never leave it. Wow, oh. exactly. Oh my exactly God. Exactly right. Oh my God. <laughs> How do you feel seeing that? Um, a little overwhelmed. Oh, it is overwhelming. Oh, and, uh, it's a real blessing, and I'm very fortunate. I really am. I feel blessed, I feel fortunate, um, and overcome with gratitude. So we know each other yes. because we met as freshmen at we DU did. when we were studying acting. That's right. And uh, I don't know how long it took us to become inseparable. It might have been really very fast. <laughs> very fast. And uh, we ended up being roommates That's at right. one point, and right. uh, we've been together ever since. But there's somebody else from BU that you maybe have been with ever since as well. Uh, Jerry Levine is going to join us. Who is your husband? Hello, darling. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hello, darling. Um, Hello, Hello, darling. I'm good. Hey. So what are we doing here tonight? Is it game night? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Yes. Everybody? I want to thank you both for uh, shooting this in your home. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We're thank here you. in Nina and Jerry's home. Uh, so, Jerry, uh, we 
met a bee also, and you guys. How soon did you start to um, become friends? <laughs> well, I think I met you. First. First. You I did an audition with, so I met you. Right. The first movement class. You were a green leotard. That's right, I did. <laughs> and um, and right. we used to get in trouble all the time oh, for God. in our history of the theater class <laughs> because it was 9 o'clock in the morning. You know, who wants a 9 o'clock class? I made it one of my missions to get you to laugh in <laughs> yes, class, yes, which yes. I seem to be pretty good at. You yeah, did. It was trouble. hysterical. Oh, my God, that's it was hilarious. Hysterical. Um, Jerry, you're involved with... Uh, JFS2 in a big way, and talk about uh, yeah. your involvement and one of your particular clients. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got involved with JFS through Nina. She introduced me to the Connect program, who introduced me to a woman named Maxine Heller, who was about 90-something at the time. And um, her granddaughter, Rachel Mason, is with us here tonight. Uh, so it has extended. We lost Maxine about two years ago because um, she just you can't live to a thousand years old. And it was an incredible experience for me. And, and it was more for me, I got more out of it, I think, than Maxine, but we argued about that, who got more. You know, the, the idea of the program is to help your buddy do things that they necessarily can't do for themselves. Maxine got, pretty quickly got the idea that she could do things for herself and she would rather go out to lunch or to the movies or, or double date with me and Nina uh, at El Coyote restaurant. and. She loved her margaritas. Drink margaritas loved in the her afternoon margaritas. and drop them off, and she would have her friend Owen, who we've lost also. He was with us as well. It was And, and she'd be with me forever. Yeah, Aww. very yeah. special. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. special. Yeah. Well, you guys mean everything to me for so long. Uh, you're my life, and you are also um, uh, responsible for the lives of some other people. <laughs> and uh, we have another video that we'd like to show you. So stay for that, Jerry. Thank you. Yeah. Unconditional love is something that I've always felt from my parents. I've never felt that there was anywhere or anything that I could do wrong that they wouldn't always try and teach me something about it or still always let me know that they loved me at the end of the day. I always felt um, seen and respected as, as an individual more so than just a son. They're very loving. They've also like welcomed my family with open arms. I don't think there is anything more important to Nina than her family. She's also a really good dog mom. Yes, thank you. Tell me what you think of my mom, Nina. She's always there for anybody and she's a great listener. Both my, my grandparents were very tolerant, progressive people. The way that Nina grew up um, with her activist parents and her family values, that it totally made sense for her to be part of Jewish family service. She always taught me how women were discriminated against and to look out for it. And through what she did with her career and with her social justice, I just saw that so clearly. Someone who affects change or wants to affect change starts with um, being able to, to listen and, and be tolerant and humble to other people. I'm really proud of all the things that she's done and, and her relationship with JFS and how far she's gone with you guys. Congratulations, Mom. We love you. We're super proud of you. And we think that you're great. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, that's so that's sweet. Kids. You're the best kids. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I love them. It's been really great to watch our children grow up together. Yes. yes. And Gina's children That's right. are beautiful, beautiful kids. And That's incredible. So um, I think that finishes me for, for the night. Congratulations, Nina. Nicely thank done. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. See you Thanks afterwards. You. All right, I'll see you. Bye. Bye, everybody. So that was wonderful, learning a little bit more about your family and how they feel about you. How about we talk about your career in the industry for a bit? OK. Studied acting, and then um, you know, moved to California and pursued a different path. So I was an agent for about four or five years um, and had extraordinary mentors and amazing people and then um, pursued the executive track and then uh, stayed as a development executive and worked my way up through um, all the different uh, phases that one goes yeah. through and then ultimately um, was fortunate enough to be at CBS and chairperson at Chair CBS. What's something that you really enjoyed the most and it meant the most? I think being able to 
establish meaningful relationships with people. That's been a part of my upbringing. I was raised in a community that I was the only Jewish kid and I was the only Puerto Rican kid <laughs> in, in the entire school. Oh boy. Um, so that helps kind of forge your identity and also helped me understand that I was just one person, but dedicating your life to, to doing good things mm -hmm. really mattered. Speaking of which, yes. we have a final video for you to see. Okay. Her secret to her success at CBS or in the television industry is the same secret that, that makes her the great leader she is at JFS. Not only do the best you can and make the best TV shows you can, but to make a difference. This is a good and kind and decent integral person in a position of power. And I love that. Some of the best TV shows in the history of the business audiences got to enjoy it because Nina wouldn't give up. Nina wouldn't take no for an answer. She's truly a creative visionary and has made a huge imprint on network television. She was a huge reason Big Bang Theory got to live. The one thing I will say is that the first time I sat down to, uh, with Nina, I felt like a, a great energy and intuitively, I felt like, you know what, this is someone that I want to work with. She just was so excited and open and whispered in my ear, I knew they wouldn't kill you off. Of course you were going to stay on the show. <laughs> and from that moment on, she had me in her back pocket at all times. When she puts herself out to organizations that are serving communities, you quickly realize what you've got. She's putting herself and her sweat equity into it all the time. I met Nina at CBS Television City. I think I was going to dinner with Debbie Barrick. She was telling us a story that just made us crack up and laugh so much. And I just thought how lucky Debbie is to get to work with this woman all the time. A marriage that I think was forged initially by Debbie Barrick, who recruited us, but also, you know, recruited a lot of people and probably the star of all the people she recruited was me. She just takes the mission of JFS so seriously. Much of her tenure as board chair was during COVID. Usually the tenure for, for the chairperson is two years and because of COVID and Nina's ability to pull people in, um, we asked her to stay on for a third year. We were dealing through COVID with real basic needs, food insecurity, housing insecurities, and mental health issues. And JFS was there under Nina's leadership and not only survived, but thrived, serving hundreds and thousands of people. And nothing was gonna stop Nina, nothing was gonna stop JFS. So Neens, I just wanna congratulate you on receiving the Spirit of Humanity Award. I know that this has been a special year for all of us, and I have so gratefully appreciated all of your support, your love, um, your friendship, and it has just made my life so much fuller. And I hope that you always go from strength to strength and that your world and our world is a better place because of the work that we've done together. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, no, you oh. deserve it. It's, oh. <laughs> oh, you so deserve it. Oh, oh honey. Thank what you. A beautiful Thank tribute, you. all of this. Well, the time that I got to serve as board chair was, it was challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what was so amazing is how everybody on the board and in the entire organization, the staff, the the administrators, everybody rallied together in a way that was 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 superhuman. And one of the people, you know, that we heard from Susie Foraderi, who, you know, is is literally embodies the essence of JFS. Um, and Susie mentioned 
someone so dear to us um, and the person who brought us into JFS, and that is uh, Debbie Barrick of Blessed Memory. And she was my colleague at CBS for almost 25 years and um, was, um, was an extraordinary, extraordinary person. When we'd go to board meetings, she'd say, isn't it incredible that you can walk in here into a board meeting, you know, and, and literally the work that the board would do was so profound. Right. And that when you would walk out, you would feel this sort of lightness in your heart right. because you knew that you were there to do good. Right. But I think getting the award has the most meaning because it is named for Susie. And I feel so blessed. Mm -hmm and so grateful. I look at everybody at JFS and know that the work that they do is changing people's lives. So I am, I'm grateful, I'm humbled, and um, kind of speechless. Oh, I love you so much, honey. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Love you. Love you. I think that was good. Yes.